Okay, if you can see this um, video here, what we've got is the um, that's the uh, Tokoro Airport from the hangar area and under supervision. Um, I was flying my quadcopter, but it went high and lost orientation, more height to try and fly it back, and uh, was unable to um, catch up where it had got to. So my last sighting was here, it was a tree in the direct line and um, so what happened was I drew a circle, I spent 20 hours searching for this 6 hours on the ground um, and then at night when I slept I came up with a squid pattern ended up that the quad was there and it was lucky that someone was down here picking up another quad and in the background behind this point were some pine trees down here so the tree I'd seen from my vantage point over here was different from the vantage point there and that was the only reason so I started on this side and the second run through about 1% into the search I found it and it was parked there I'd started from this side um, would have taken ages to walk these lines to actually find the, the quadcopter so that was one of the um, quadcopter rescues um, and that's the quadcopter you saw before right so you've actually seen how we um, how we actually found two quadcopters over a couple of weeks period. Um, both of them were remarkable. One was the grid pattern of um, walking out and then drawing concentric circles to actually isolate it down. Um, so when a quad goes down, it's important to find a marker um, in the distance of where it's actually landed. And that really narrows from 360 degrees, that really narrows it down to you know, a good five degree where it is. Um, and then you put the epicenter where you think it had fallen and then draw it out and then you walk those lines that's what I've learned with quadcopter you actually start where you are and you actually walk that line and then come back and you walk the next line and then you walk the next line and you walk the next line and that's the only way to find a quadcopter you can spend all your time running around and all of that sort of thing but you actually um, it's much more it's difficult to find it when you're walking around with no actual grid pattern but actually walking those lines you can you know exactly with the 15 meters either, 15 feet either side that you haven't forgotten it or lost it and then you do the next one and then if you're serious about finding a $200 quadcopter frame but some people say oh it's worth more than that well it just depends but so that's the first point of how you find it if you don't have any feedback um, if you're lucky enough to have a signal um, what we tried to do is take off, but one of the motors was caught in grass, so when it tried to take off, um, all that happened was uh, the other two just, and it didn't give us any perspective of where we were. So we just used the, the pit that was facing into the sun, and we just used signals. Um, I talked to Bruce about it. If you turn the aerials down on your, um, on your antennas, <clears throat> and you walk, when it's pointing directly at the quadcopter, um, it'll be the weakest signal. It's when you actually turn the antennas sideways, you get the maximum signal which then amplifies and that's what you see a picture. So what you do is you turn those things down pointing and then you can actually get a range finder. We didn't use that method, we just used uh, where it was strongest on the hills and it happened to be in a little valley, it was on the top of a crest of a hill and it just shone down this valley. Either side of that and on the road there was no sign of it. Just lucky we picked up the faint as we drove past a faint look. My son, 12 year old Sale was with me in the car having a look at it. So that was the, um, that was the secret of finding that. Um, however there's got to be a much better way. Ideally it would be nice to have a quadcopter to take off and you can take a picture um, and looking down and it'll have a bleeper on it of exactly where the responder is, transponder, of where that quadcopter is. That would be the ideal, is having two quadcopters, one looking for the other one. Um, that's where we really want to go with these videos. So at this stage I just showed you some old techniques of finding um, a quadcopter when you lose it, but my advice is don't lose it. Um, I, later on in the day I just spent a lot of time just flying close proximity around my big toe getting one of those um, getting one of these just to come and just touch my shoe um, and that was what I spent the most of the day a couple of batteries worth of charge on doing that rather than the good big flying around but I also did some um, flight as well on FPV anyway I look forward to the next video see you soon and subscribe and also make a comment your comments are really important and I will get back to answering them